Does everybody in Montana drive drunk? Are the ski towns filling up with liberal snowflakes? And is everyone in Montana a real badass? We're going to answer those questions and more. So grab your saddles and your ski poles. We're going to unbox the state of Montana. Montana, named after the Spanish word for mountains. Look at this vast, untapped land. You might not be able to tell from this shot, but it's one of the fastest growing states in the country. There's plenty of room here. I mean, Montana has just over a million people, and there are only seven people per square mile. That's not a lot. It's a huge state. This is big sky country. Out here in the wilderness, interspersed among small towns and communities are all sorts of areas to explore, and tons of different animal life. Living here, you feel like you're in a nature park. That's because a lot of the state is a nature park. The state isn't just diverse in terms of wildlife either. Among the state's residents are a ton of different types of people and culture. <laughs> JK, this isn't a very diverse state at all. It's basically 97% white, local drunks, a few Native Americans, tons of hunters, and a handful of millennial brats. Really, that's basically it. Video's over. No, Montana's way more than that, pal. It's not just all white people, sorta. To get a complete understanding of this big old state, we need to look at a big old map and see each region separately. This is Montana. Looks like there's a lot going on here, huh? Actually, there really isn't. It's a slow paced lifestyle where you have teeny tiny towns, places to ski, a half dozen smallish cities that would barely even be considered a real city in most states, and wide open areas where you can drive for hours and barely see a soul. We're going to begin up here in the northwest part of the state. Now the western third of Montana is mountains and valleys, a huge national park, pretty lakes, a few decent sized towns, some Native Americans, and one decent sized city. Way up here along the Canadian border is Glacier National Park. It's a million acres big. It's sort of part of the Rockies and you can find almost 800 lakes, grizzly bears, and moose. Every year somebody gets attacked by a bear up here. There's also tons of hiking trails and of course glaciers. There are a couple dozen glaciers up here, but they're all shrinking because of global warming. But don't talk to a Montana guy about that. He'll call you a bleeding heart libtard. It's pretty wide open over here by the Idaho border, but interspersed throughout much of this side of the state from the Idaho border all the way down to the continental divide are smatterings of ultra wealthy communities. This is where the wealthy people with second homes are. Many of these lakeside homes are only used for a few months of the year, and then the out-of-staters head back to their warmer states where there's much more to do. For most of the year, the only people you see in them are the caretakers. Now, you may have heard a lot about how Montana's changing. We're gonna get to that in more detail later, but there are many places in Western Montana which are being overrun by young liberal city slickers who want to experience the stereotypical Montana lifestyle. They move here from places like Washington, Oregon, California, and Texas to become wannabe fly fishermen and ski bums. They wear Patagonia and they rent out bedrooms, barely making a living scraping by. Many live here in Flathead County. Their out-of-state plates give them away. Many Montana locals aren't too privy on the out-of-staters, as they worry they're going to bring their liberal BS to the state. That's how they put it. Those aren't my words. It's very common to see a Montana local flipping the bird at a newly minted Montana resident with out-of-state plates. It's also not unheard of for a Montana man or woman to run an out-of-stater off the road. They're very protective of the state. Areas in western Montana where you'll find these out-of-state wannabes include Whitefish, Kalispell, and Missoula. These are all very different places. Whitefish is a super liberal, wealthy place at the base of Whitefish Mountain Resort. It's a really cute town where homes average nearly a half million bucks. Lots of younger people move here to work in tourism, and others come in search of the quiet mountain life with a pinch of modern creature comforts. There are also lots of big fancy homes on the outskirts of town with wealthy people from all over. Now Kalispell is near Flathead Lake, the biggest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi. This city of 25,000 people is far more conservative than Whitefish, but you get a lot of people moving here from out of state as well. For three months, Flathead Lake is awesome, like best summer months you could spend anywhere in the country. Flathead Lake is warm in the summer and it's dark until like midnight, so people spend all summer on this lake out on their boats getting drunk. But then winter comes and this place changes big time, pal. Kalispell is the epitome of what makes up Montana life for a lot of folks in this state. You see, in the winter months, much of western Montana is very gloomy and cold. 
And from fall till the end of spring, it's a very depressing place. And unless you're into the outdoors, there isn't much to do here except drink. So beginning at noon, folks shuffle around from bar to bar to find a buzz or dip into one of the thousand casinos tucked inside of restaurants or bars and gas stations. The old timers who aren't motivated to see nature kind of waste their days away with a cocktail or beer in their hands. It's actually like that in much of Montana, drinking, gambling, and weed. For many of the old timers, hunting is the only real outdoor thing they do. Since the cost of living is so low, a lot of the old timers don't have to put in much effort to make a living, so there's a lot of downtime. And in the winter months, they're down at the bar. Now, Missoula, down here, is an actual city you've probably heard of. Home to 75,000 people, this is a young, liberal haven that's growing super fast. There's a big school here, the University of Montana. Missoula has a great little historic downtown with little festivals and farmer's markets and whatnot. And there's lots of homeless people here now as well, which doesn't sit well with the hardcore Montana old-timers. There's been a home buying frenzy here, with many of the out-of-state folks wanting to escape their ghetto hometowns. The trend has been accelerated due to the pandemic. If you're a homeowner in Missoula, you love the home buying frenzy. Your home prices are shooting through the roof, 10% last year alone. But if you live in the state of Montana already and want to move to Missoula, you hate it because all those damn out-of-state people are jacking up prices and ruining everything. Also on this side of the state's Hot Springs. It's just a small town with one cell phone tower and a bunch of natural hot springs. Their motto is, limp in, leap out. Also south of Missoula along Route 93 heading south into Idaho are small mountain towns and cities made up of middle class white people who probably want to form militia groups to overthrow the government. If you're a middle class white person who watches Doomsday Preppers, you'd fit right in down here. Finally, worth discussing on this part of the state is one of Montana's seven Native American reservations. Two of them are in western Montana, the Blackfeet Reservation and the Flathead Reservation. Both are very large and poor. The reservations in Montana are extremely deprived. One of the worst reservation towns is Browning, located inside the Blackfeet Reservation. Like many of Montana's reservation communities, it's very poor and sad and dangerous here. Like, you probably don't want to get out of your car, especially at night here. A lot of the Native Americans who live here drink and take drugs and spend their days at the casino. And what makes things worse for them is the weather. The Blackfeet Reservation might be located in the worst part of the state. It sits on the eastern front of Glacier National Park on the edge of the Continental Divide. The wind and cold here makes things miserable for the folks on this part of the state. But you can get cheap fireworks here. That's cool. Since we're along Route 2, we should take this route all the way east to the end of the state. Route 2 is what Montanans call the High Line because it's the most north-south route in the state. You can take Route 2 from Libby all the way to Bainville near the North Dakota border. It's only 625 miles and it would take you about 10 hours to make that drive. It's a very beautiful drive. It's very flat for most of the year and the weather fluctuates from chilly to frigid. This side of the state is very much like the Midwest. Along this route, every 15 minutes or so, you're going to pass a teeny little community of poor white people and wonder, how do these people do it? One bar, a post office, and a grocery store? For many, it's a simple life, but they embrace it. No traffic, no drama, no bills. To you and I, it might look boring and depressing. To them, it's home. This wide open side of the state has the best hunting in Montana. It's mostly elk and deer and birds that Montana people shoot at. Getting a big old buck is what people in Montana dream about. An early morning hunt is what gets people out of bed here. In fact, Montana ranks third in the country for percentage residents with hunting licenses at 21%. South Dakota has the most at 24%. And Montana ranks first in the country for percentage of adults who have at least one gun at home at 66%. But you know there's lots of people here who have many, 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 many guns in their safes. I know several myself. Anyways, hunting is huge, guns are huge, and hunting and guns is what makes Montana, Montana. They have some of the least restrictive gun laws in the country. They love their freedom, but if you move here and you don't bring a gun, everybody's just going to assume you do have a gun and they'll give you space. Does hunting season ever end here? Here's a breakdown of the date card for a Montana hunting season. It actually looks like you can shoot something pretty much any day of the year. Mountain lion, moose, black bear. You can shoot a bear? That's mean. Paddlefish? What's that? A weird fish. You shoot fish in Montana? That's hardcore. Animals wise, here's some stats for you. There's 580,000 deer in Montana, 5,000 moose, 
14,000 bear, 8,000 elk, 2,500 bison, and about 500 bald eagle nests. I don't think my dad can hunt anything. Hey, I could shoot something to feed my family if I needed to. Even a moose. Mappy couldn't hit a moose if it was standing in his bedroom. Oh, Mappy, put that thing away. You're always trying to show off your gun skills, man. We might have to get you a safety training course, dude. I thought I took that thing away from him. Of course, farms and ranches are a big deal in eastern Montana, so if you want to rope and ride or make hay while the sun shines, this is where you'd wind up. There's 28,000 farms and ranches in the state. Most produce wheat and beef. These are where the real men roam, hombre, where they cook pork and beans right in the can over an open flame, where they wear beat up Stetson hats and spurs and chaps, where the mustaches have chew stains and smell like whiskey. And that's just the women. Kiss a Montana woman out here and you're going to taste black coffee and beaver jerky. Rodeo's huge in Montana and some parts of the state, they hold rodeos year round. That's another level of tough. But of course, the whole state isn't just cowboys and cowgirls and boots and spurs. Montana also holds competitions in snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, ice fishing, and sled dog racing. Oil's a big deal in Montana, too. This state ranks 13th in oil production. Most of Montana's oil production comes from the Bakken Formation in the northeastern part of the state here along the North Dakota border. Also way out here in eastern Montana is a cache of unknown number of nuclear weapons. It's said that Montana has more nukes buried out in its western prairie than any other state. It's also said that if Montana was a country, it would have the fourth most nukes in the world. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is true, you're either really safe here or you're a target. For the Russians! Anyways, as you can see, there's miles and miles of open highway in this part of the state. Montanans measure how long it takes to get somewhere by hours, not miles, or by beers. Like Missoula to Billings isn't five hours, it's a 12-pack. Up until 2005, you could still legally drink and drive in this state, but then they changed the laws. Oh, they still do it though. Legal weed just passed, and there's a huge weed culture in this state too. You can get away with a lot out here driving around. There's just not a lot of cops to enforce the speed limit or the consumption habits in Montana. I don't care how macho you think you are. If I see your truck flying by me on any road in Montana, you're totally getting a ticket. Thanks, super gay cop. But actually, here's Nick Johnson as Chuck Norris. He would enforce the law. Come on, tough guy. Down here in southern Montana is another Native American reservation. And right outside of that is Billings. Now, Billings is the biggest city in Montana with more than 100,000 people, everyone. Now we're talking. Billings is far more affordable than all of Montana's largest cities. Home prices here are about $269,000. The weather here is more mild, and there's a ton of stuff to do in the summer if you want to get involved. And seeing as how this is way out east and nowhere near a ski lodge, it's far less touristy and not as desirable for the millennial snowflakes. Of all major cities in Montana, if you call them major, Billings is the most conservative. Downtown proper is going to be blue, but just outside of town, and it is red, which means lots of pickup trucks. Montana loves him some pickups. Montana is just behind Alaska for percentage of truck sales as a percentage of all vehicle sales. In Montana, three in four vehicles sold is a truck. Over here is Great Falls. Homes are super cheap. It's really pretty right along the Missouri River. It's kind of gloomy a lot and not really very exciting. Bozeman's down here in southern Montana. Again, this is a draw for younger liberals who want to buy expensive ski clothes and pretend they're down with the locals. It's super expensive here. Homes are by far the highest priced of any of Montana's big cities. The average price for a home in Bozeman's $658,000 and going up by the week. Out-of-staters who want to be in the in crowd move to Bozeman because it's growing so fast, especially in tech jobs. In fact, Bozeman's one of the fastest growing cities in the country. They won't have 50,000 people here for long. They call it Bose Angeles because of all the Californians moving here. And that is so sad. Helena, the capital of Montana. It's not very big. There's only 33,000 people here. It's an old school town, so there's not a lot of younger people moving here yet. There's some really nice old Victorian homes here from the gold rush days. It has a moderate pace to it since it's smaller and more rural. It's probably the best place to raise a family in Montana. Homes are around 325K. Montanans aren't as frugal as you might think. Sure, there's a lot of people here who think things are too spendy. 
and they'll drive their 1975 Ford trucks until the wheels fall off and then they'll stick used wheels back on the thing. But there's plenty of big old brand new $50,000 Suburbans and Tahoes all over this state and the amount of money people spend on hunting and fishing gear shows they definitely aren't cheap. The school system in Montana is okay. They pay teachers pretty poorly. Most folks in Montana don't make a lot of money, but the cost of living is low too. You can live comfortably here on a small budget. But if you move to Montana, you should already have a steady income or a job lined up. There aren't a lot of opportunities for good money here, unless you're cool with the small town life, which many are. Most people are happy here. They're easy to please. Many are content. You can sort of disappear way up here and escape the drama that comes with living in most of America today. But as new money and opportunities literally pour into the state, things are going to change. People are moving to Montana in big numbers. The state grew by 2% last year alone, and that's ruffling feathers among the locals who worry about new policies and people fishing all their fish and taking away their guns. Not that they'll actually give them up. All right, cowboy, I think we did a pretty good job of talking about the state of Montana, right? Yes, we did. And as you can see, people in Montana have electricity and the internet, and no, they don't poop in outhouses for the most part. There's not abominable snowmen everywhere and people don't churn their own butter and not everybody drinks whiskey by the barrel at the local saloons. We could have gone on and on and talked about a lot of stuff, right? I mean, the gold rush history in the state. We could have talked about Butte. How did we not mention Butte or Yellowstone National Park? I mean, come on, but we have to go. I need a drink. Actually, I don't, but I'm going to have one anyway. If you live in Montana, then you like to hunt. If you live in Montana, then you like to hunt. If you live in Montana, then you like to fish. If you live in Montana, then you like to fish. If you live in Montana, then you eat raw meat. If you live in Montana, then you eat raw meat. If you live in Montana, then you drive a truck. If you live in Montana, then you drive a truck. Montana is such a great state. I love Montana, cause it's a great state. Montana's such a great state. I love it there. Tough. The people here so tough. Fast. The people drive so fast. Cheap. The people don't need a lot. Bored. The people here are likely bored. If you live in Montana, then you like to hunt. If you live in Montana, then you like to hunt. If you live in Montana, then you like to fish. If you live in Montana, then you like to fish. If you live in Montana, then you eat raw meat. If you live in Montana, then you eat raw meat. If you live in Montana, then you drive a truck. If you live in Montana, then you drive a truck. Thanks to my cousin Tanner for helping me with this video. You can check out his website at tannerjohnson.us. There's a lot of pictures about Montana that you can even buy. His website link is in the description. So you live in Montana, Tanner. Tell me what's good and bad about living in Montana. So some of the really good things I would have to say um, have a lot to do with the snow. Snowboarding is amazing. Up here skiing is amazing. Um, you have some of the best summers, some of the best views, some of the best f fishing in the world. Um, it's just un unbelievable in the summertime. Uh, lots of activities to do. Um, there's no state tax. It's very cheap. There's not a lot of traffic. There's not a lot of people. There's the laws are very flexible. Um, those are just a few things that a few of many that I've come to really love about Montana. And then, um, I'd say some of the bad things have a lot to do with the weather right now. It's extremely cloudy and, and cold for about eight months out of the year, nine months, maybe. Um, you hardly ever see the sunshine, but you just kind of roll with it. Some other bad things are, uh, I don't know. There's, there's some sketchy people. There's some drugs that float around every now and then there's uh, crime of course, because there's not really a lot of police. It seems like, and um, I don't know, it, it, it can get real boring if you don't keep yourself occupied. So what do people do for fun in the long winter months in Montana? Um, 
So you got ice fishing. That's pretty big up here. You have uh, skiing. You have cross-country skiing, snowboarding, snowshoeing. Um, you have uh, all sorts of stuff. Actually, that's about it. <laughs> okay. So what do people do if they don't – if they aren't into the outdoors, what do they do for fun in Montana? I'd say there's a lot of time spent in the bars because it's – our days are really short in the wintertime here. It gets dark at like four o'clock, I want to say, like pitch black dark and sun doesn't rise till eight. So you really don't have much time during the day to do anything other than if you don't have activities to do, you kind of just find yourself sitting at a bar or going out to eat um, or staying home because you can't really work outside in the winter. The grounds freeze. So jobs are limited. Um, but yeah. Because Montana is, they say it's the last best place. That's its saying. And it is. It's true. It's one of the last places it still feels like the Wild West. And when you get hundreds of thousands of people coming here, that, that is just thrown out the window. Yeah. I mean, it's not like there's not a lot of room, though, right? I mean, it's a huge state. So by too many people, you mean too many of the wrong people? Exactly. Too many of the wrong people. But a lot of people that come here are the right kind of people that, that want to keep it the way it is and that want to see it stay the way it's been for hundreds of years. And they like that wild West feeling, but then again, you have the people that want to change. So how is Montana changing um, since you've moved there and is it changing in a good way or in a bad way? Uh, it depends who you ask a lot of, um, a lot of like, People that are born and raised here think it's changing in a bad way because they think um, they think a lot of new people are coming in. They're coming to try to change the laws, try to change the lifestyle. And uh, but then you talk to other people and they say that there's there's more money, there's more development, there's more opportunity now. There's there's a lot more uh, ways to thrive. So it just depends who you ask. Personally, I think I think uh, it's a good thing to an extent, um, but. Eventually, I turn into like a crisis in what way? I just too many people, too many people uh, trying to change things. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.